Today's vlog, of course, is all about the Crystal Palace game. And I thought I'd look at it in a slightly different way. Obviously, City now have more and more supporters who come from all around the globe. And a home game like this against Palace is perhaps an example of where, on a Saturday afternoon, 3 o'clock kickoff, there'll be a number of supporters who've travelled over. So I'm going to try and find out what motivates them to come here. I don't think it's a massive number at the moment, but it's a growing number of supporters who come from other countries. Now, last night I was actually at an event organised by Peter Barnes and Tommy Booth, which included uh, the visit of several Norwegian supporters who'd come over specifically last night, flown in yesterday. So let's start by hearing a little bit of what they said and why they're over here and then I'll see if I can find a few more people who made the journey to watch the game today. Hi, I'm Daniel Skauge, I'm 24 years old. What about in Norway are you from? From uh, Kristensand, in the uh, south. In the south, yeah. And this is your dad? Yes, yes. Gerhard Skauge, uh, uh, 57 years old, <laughs> uh, and I've been a city supporter all my life. And my father, who's 88, is also a city supporter. So how do you end up being a city fan in Norway? Uh, because my father is a goalkeeper, former goal, former goalkeeper, and uh, he was so um, impressed by uh, Bert Trotman right. when he uh, took his uh, neck, 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 yes, neck. Yeah. and then he became a city supporter, and I stood also a goal, and I must also be a, a city supporter. Do you follow Norwegian football as well? Do you have a Norwegian team, or are you just city fans? Uh, we have uh, starts. In Christensen, as we follow, uh, but uh, it's always been uh, Man City. It's always been Man City. Do you see every game? Are they all on TV over yeah. there? Yeah, I try to uh, when I have time to. But I see always every game. Even 20 years ago, Ian, um, we saw a guy, a guy called Kai Fulkielsen, a solicitor, <laughs> who nearly built a hotel on Alan Turning Way. And then, of course, Tor Sonstaby, who's a great friend of mine, and Tommy's. He's been involved with the Norwegian brands for 20, 25 years. And in fact, when they met Dad years ago at Platt Lane, they made him president. Asked him, would he be president of the branch? And he says, yeah, of course I will. Because he used to sit and talk to him about the old days, you know. So he went, he was president for about 10 years. And then when he died in 2010, Tor Sonstaby said, would you become the president of the Norwegian branch? I said, I'd love to. And, uh, well, yeah, Tom comes over, Joe Corrigan, Asa Hartford. They look after us proud in Norway, and we have a great time in Oslo. So the first person I'm meeting who's, uh, who's come from abroad to watch this game is an Australian. So you should be standing on your head, sir. Well, I normally do. If, if you give me a second and he can hold me ankles, I can run that after you. <laughs> That'll only take a second. So is this a one-time visit? Uh... No, we've been over a few times. Been backwards and forwards a lot. We've had family, we've had friends work here, and yeah. So it's and there's always been an alliance with City. So um, I had a younger son that worked for Baz in the pub system. This is your mate here. This is my it? mate. Yeah, Baz Riley. He's born and bred. He's a local. And um, if you know him, well, then we had to. Uh, there was no choice. It had to be City. That was it. So is there a lot of interest in City now down under? Well, where I am in our little house, we're out in the sticks, we're miles away from anywhere, but we always do. We always look up the paper, we always keep a check on what's going on. And we got full of excitement last year and then things sort of fizzled out a little bit. But this year we're feeling a lot better. It's, we're starting to feel really good about it. Palace have been having plenty of chances, but haven't been getting the score. And I think today they might score. Oh, don't and be saying that. No, I know I'm not allowed to say that. But, but I'm, that's right, I'll be on the first boat back. I'll be chained to the mask. But it's football. Things happen in footy. It is. Top against bottom. I think it'll be an exciting game, whatever happens. Okay. On the right, Eric Rock. It is Eric Rock. So it's 2 0. Well, as well as fans from other countries, there is, of course, the media from other countries as well. Like you're from Brazil, ESPN in Brazil, is that right? So are you getting more and more interested now in, in what happens over in Manchester City than perhaps you once were? Absolutely. Well, especially since Gabriel Jesus arrived uh, last season. And after that, uh, now we have Danilo and we have uh, Ederson as well. So. Uh, it's it's only growing uh, in popularity and in Brazil uh, there are many people talking about uh, city right now in Brazil people have more of an impression of uh, city being uh, a global club 
because of the the project because uh the the money that's coming into the club so uh there's this international internationalization of of city and it's a very strong aspect uh in brazil we we don't see uh, man city as a local club as a city club we see man city as as this big project definitely uh, actually city has a great history great fans so this is nice to to always uh present to to the brazilians uh, because uh, they always think about the money first not uh, how traditional the club is and the fans and the history and everything and everything that city was before the money so that's always good to to take to to the brazilian fans but i don't i don't see that as a negative thing because uh you have to look uh, ahead you have to to look to the future future and city is only only growing and it's only good for the club yeah from? I'm from Turkey, Istanbul. And where are these other people from? Uh, my friend here is from Ecuador. Yeah. Ecuador, yeah. brilliant. Okay. I'm from Sri Lanka. From Sri Lanka. Wow, yeah. we really have got a cross section here. Yeah, so why it. have you come to the game? Is this the first time you've yeah, come over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's first time here, so we are walking around and found good place to watch a match here. Are you now a city supporter, or is this just purely coming over here to? It's to a holiday, so. So it's like a, as a tourist, yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and what about you? Is it the same for you then, or are you a City fan? This is my first Premier League match. I'm not a supporter of Manchester City, but it's the best league in the world, so I will enjoy the match. Okay, and, and are you a City? I mean, you've got City there on yeah, your cheek. Yeah, I can't so. lie, so <laughs> I have sympathy for the uh, Blues as well. And, uh, yeah. uh, I've, been, I've been watching the games for the past few years of the Manchester City. And I like their football quite a lot and uh, try to watch them as, mu as much as I can. In Turkey, are there yeah. a lot of City fans? Or? Yeah, I can sh fairly say that there are a uh, lot of fans uh, for the Manchester City and uh, especially you have very good uh, team and uh, the players, they have a very good fan base in Turkey. What about Ecuador? I mean, are the City fans over there? Well, there are many fans of City and other Premier League teams, most of the Manchester United because Antonio Valencia is from Ecuador, but there are a lot of supporters from for the City. What do you know about Manchester City in Ecuador? Well, it's quite known. Yeah, there are a lot of people that know and support the Manchester City in because they have a lot of South American players and they play quite well. Yeah, it's very friendly, it's very warm, the people are the supporters, everything. You have to go and get a city scarf now. Yeah. <laughs> is this the first? Oh, is, is this the first? Four now. Okay. What? What made me? Uh, it's one is the team, the atmosphere. I think. I think the word when I heard like citizens, I thought like, okay, I want to belong to that team. Plus that there's so many you know players from different. Uh, 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 countries as well, so different culture. Uh, they always bring really interesting figures. I mean, in terms of managers. Uh, so Pep Guardiola, I think, is one of the best. So, and I, I used to support Barcelona in, in Spain, but now, but now it's like City is, is is everything. And this year we'll do something in the Champions League. I'm very positive. And is is there a lot of City fans in Saudi Arabia? Yes, I would say is becoming growing now. Uh, it's not. More than Liverpool, more than United? Definitely it... more than Liverpool, but I, I don't think it's more than United. I wish we were very soon, but it's not. I think it's not that. It's not more popular than United. This is your dad here, is it? Yes, that's my dad. Is, is yes. your first, all, all, people like, first all people like Manchester City Everybody from Saudi Arabia. Yes, yes, Manchester City number one in Saudi Arabia. Good, to, good yeah. to hear. Enjoy your day. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So I've been taught to supporters who've, who've come from uh, all over the place, Ukraine, Saudi Arabia, and back again with our Norwegian friends that we started off with. Now, you know you're in your city gear, you're ready to go. Um, what, what are you feeling today then? I mean, is, is this as exciting as you expected it to be? We look forward to it. It's been a fantastic tour, and uh, yesterday and the expectation today is great. So we hope it'll be a good match. You're going to be coming more often now, aren't you? Of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good weather. It's going to be a good weather. Not the best half I saw, you know, but I think the most difficult has been done by scoring the first goal. So I think now they're going to 
Vai gonna score a second one, even the third one, but got cap I mean Vaillant Kepe about to do it. Uh, Crystal Palace defending very well for 4-4-1-1 four, four, one, one by playing that system and defending all of them defending very well. So that's that's why it's been difficult to score the first goal, but now it's been done, so should be should be better now. Individual magic for Sane in the end. Uh, what, what, I mean, what a goal, I mean uh, what a player. Uh, I like him and uh, we need more inspiration like he did to score his goal to, to score more goals so hopefully second half we're gonna see more goals what do you make of that then absolutely fantastic you know what i mean what more do you want you're getting used to this now here five nil six nil getting a bit five. boring like mendy says shark team shark team Awesome, awesome. What, what's so good about it? I mean, apart from the obvious and the goals, they're just playing well as a team, playing as a unit. Well, that's the manager. Yeah, got to be on it. Brilliant, brilliant, good win. Game. I thought I didn't know at the start whether um, we were going to go out and get an early goal. I thought it'd be five or six. I thought if we would get a goal later on in the game, like we did around half time, I thought we'd, we'd struggle a bit because we seem to. If we don't get a goal till late, the fans get a bit, you know, worried about what's going to happen. But you know, we, we certainly finished the job in the end. And Slido Sane's first goal, what a, what a goal! It's unbelievable. So yeah. What about Delft's final goal? Well, that was unbelievable. I've got. I come with. Um, three of my cousins and they left five minutes early so I've got to go and tell them about it now but what a goal that was and uh, yeah I'm sure Pep would be quite happy about that he looked quite happy in the end didn't he so big quality. game at Chelsea next week now yeah. does this set that up do you think it does it's my birthday that day so I hope we do quite well but uh, yeah I think we'll go there we always go there quite we've not got the best history I don't think over at Chelsea but I think we'll be all right we'll We'll certainly give them a game. Champions, but they're not all that good, are they? You should have put 1-0 in that, wouldn't you, rather oh, than 5-0? Of course, yeah. Three points in it. Just make sure we stay above United, but it's on goal difference or not. Who cares? Above United or do us, that's good. Fine. So normally I, I do a match report at this point, but yeah. I've got Steve Redmond here with me, so why should I tell you what the game is all about when he's here? What do you think of that, Steve? I enjoyed it, to be honest. Um, I thought, to be fair, first half, Crystal Palace um, came and defended well. You looked at on the counter-attack. I um, thought so City's tempo in the first half was a bit slow, to be honest, um, allowing Crystal Palace to get back in, into shape. But I mean, I know it's always a good time to score, but right in half time, you know, I think it makes a world of difference, especially to a player. Um, <clears throat> and then second half, City came out and got the second second goal, which kills the game. Um, and as a player, I know myself and my past experience, the 2 0 down with 40 odd minutes to go. Um, against the world class side of the City, it's going to be hard work, and as I say, Steamroll City in the end, it could have been seven or eight in the end to be fair, but uh, I know we're getting greedy, but another five like so, uh, it's good for the goal difference, but I say in the end we got there and I enjoyed it. Chelsea next week obviously down at Stamford Bridge, I mean, yeah. it's not going to be five down there is it? Well you never know, it's a funny old game as you say, isn't it? but uh, I mean I'm sure City fans will go there and take a 1-0 to be honest, um, obviously the pressure's on Chelsea there at home, and they'll be looking to beat City because obviously the title threat, but um, no, honestly, I think City can go anywhere and win in the country, to be honest. Uh, should have no fear going to Chelsea. Um, and hopefully they'll come back with a three points. And you know what? Steve's going to join us on XS Manchester Forever Blue this coming Tuesday between 6 and 7. So, chat to you then again, Steve. No problem at all. I look forward to it. The final word goes to our Norwegian friends. What do you make of it then? It was fantastic second half. Well, a bit disappointed after the first 30, 35 minutes. And then the goal come and then... It, then the game was over. Absolutely dominated game. David Silva, massive player. Massive player. Well worth the trip over then. Yeah. Of course. Of course. We'll, come, we'll, we'll be back. <laughs> of course. <laughs>